Thanks for clicking on to the midweek edition of Vogan's European Outlook. It is the second video of today. I did produce a tropical update just a few hours ago on what is very, very close to becoming Hurricane Helene. And it looks as if it is going to undergo rapid intensification on approach to the United States over the next day, 36 hours or so. So stay tuned to the channel if you're interested in the tropics. I will be continuing to do updates on Helene as it makes a landfall on the northwest portions of Florida during the next uh, 24 to 48 hours or so. So stay tuned for that. It certainly is a very active weather pattern here across the UK. At the moment, we've seen historic rainfall back during the course of the weekend and into the beginning of this working week. And uh, these are the past 72-hour rainfall totals seen by medial seal here with obviously uh, the wettest conditions across parts of the south midlands in the south central areas of england we have seen more in the way of uh, rain and showers moving from north to south as colder arctic air comes back into the pattern once again but it is quite an interesting active and a uh, rather um, unusual pattern if i'm being honest with you so we'll get into the details in just a second here, but be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so. There is lots of content getting thrown out here on the channel. Uh, I continue to strive to provide unbiased, unhyped weather content here on, on, on YouTube for not just the UK, Ireland and Europe, but also globally. Remember, we've got the, the live streams on a Sunday afternoon. There will be a live stream this weekend coming up at 7.30 p.m. where we'll be looking at the big broad picture of things. So um, so yes, lots of reason to stick around here. And uh, I also want to uh, highlight something to you. The deep dive produced yesterday by our very own Aidan McGivern. Uh, the Met Office provide a deep dive every Tuesday afternoon going into a uh, more in-depth look at weather patterns for the UK. And uh, it Aiden specifically spoke about the historic rainfall back during the course of the weekend and also um, some of the dynamics that go into severe thunderstorms, uh, wind shear, uh, supercell thunderstorms uh, and how the pattern evolved uh, back during the course of the weekend. So I'm going to leave, I'm going to try my best to remember to leave a link in the description below today's video. If you haven't already done so, be sure to watch that video. Aiden provides a, a, an excellent overview and explanation as to how the weather pattern evolved and became so extreme over the UK. We had tornadoes, we had exceptional lightning strikes. We've seen, you know, 100, 150 millimetres rain falling within the space of 48 to 72 hours. We've seen um, record 24 hour rainfall totals in parts of Bedfordshire, Oxfordshire. And uh, I, I would encourage you to check out Aiden's deep dive from yesterday afternoon. So, like I say, I'll leave a link in the description below. We have Arctic Air sinking south. We've got a very active jet stream also to speak about. And uh, the fact that we've got a, uh, an active storm track forced to the south, strong block over Greenland and over the North Atlantic. We've got a deep Arctic oscillation and North Atlantic oscillation negative. I'm going to be speaking either tomorrow, if not on Friday, about the polar vortex. The fact that it's near record-breaking weak levels at the moment here, the reasons possibly why we have got such unusual stratospheric warmth back, extending back during the course of the summer, and also as we progress through this autumn season, we're seeing unusual things taking place within the stratosphere. And uh, I'm going to be looking at that in a bit of detail, we're going to look a little bit more as to what is the Arctic Oscillation, North Atlantic Oscillation, how it plays a significant role in our weather, especially as we move towards the winter season. So uh, that is going to get looked at over the next couple of days here in the channel. So stay tuned and hit that subscribe button. So anyway, we have got uh, a pattern at the moment that is uh, highly amplified. We've got a big stone uh, within the river that is the atmosphere above our heads at the moment here, d uh, forced and colder south, but also due to the increase in temperature gradient between north and south, we've got a very powerful jet stream at the moment actually ripping across the Atlantic. And this is the reason why we've got 
such an active pattern across the UK. Unusually cold air for mid to late September standards moving south. We've got uh, very, very um, you know, unsettled, deep areas of low pressure moving in off the Atlantic. And uh, we're going to look a little bit more in detail in terms of what is going on with our pattern at the moment here. You notice here that we've got quite a wavy jet, but we've also got a very far south jet stream. This is looking over the northern hemisphere at the moment. And we've got one low after another. You know the script if you live, especially in southern and central areas of the British Isles. We've got another system moving in off the Atlantic. But notice the jet core now. Unfortunately, it's tilted um, to the left somewhat here. This is North America. We've got this um, active uh, storm pattern, storm track moving out of the, the Bering Sea, Alaska, into the northwestern half of North America. That's forcing the jet to then get forced north over western North America, then downstream it is getting forced south into the eastern side of North America. But in turn, this ripple effect, this Rosby wave train that is MJO uh, enhanced, we've got a strong amplified Manjulian oscillation in phase 7 and 8 at the moment here. And what that's doing is it's creating this buckling of the jet and then forcing the Arctic oscillation, the North Atlantic oscillation to go negative. In turn, that is then forcing colder air into the middle latitude pattern, but with a lot of residual warmth within the middle latitudes, when you're forcing colder air south, you're then increasing the dynamics for uh, a stronger jet, deeper areas of low pressure, and also bigger rainfall events. And that has been the case. And you can see here we've got a very powerful jet uh, crossing the Atlantic at the moment here, and then moving into the southern half of the UK. This is an incubation region for cyclogenesis low pressure development here especially when these lows move from the south side to the north side of the jet that then forces the air to pile up bundle and deepen and that is exactly what we've got but with this big block over greenland here if we look at the the chart here you can see this uh, uh, bright red color here even a little purple showing the big block in the upper levels of the atmosphere that is forcing the arctic air to descend out of the pole and into the western half of Europe here. And with that storm track, um, you know, quite active, we've got a lot of warmer between the Azores and, uh, you know, the Canary Islands up towards Iberia. When you force that cold air to then move south into this region of warmer air, you're then strengthening the strength of the jet stream and in turn, the low pressure develops in response to that but they, it's a very very blocky situation this is an unusual block now blocky patterns are quite often the case during spring season and also during the autumn season but this is an unusually strong area of high pressure over the northwest atlantic up into greenland here allowing this continuation of, of colder air from from this uh, from the north here so obviously we've seen uh, exceptional rainfall and i want to quickly touch on this this is actually uh, off the MetWatch Twitter feed here. Uh, and this is a tweet here by uh, by Robert saying that confirmed wettest day in the Oxfordshire area on record. So this is the wettest day on record for Oxford since 1827. Yesterday midnight, the midnight total uh, at uh, Osney Lock was 100 millimetres of rain. Uh, we've also got uh, a few other spots here. Ignoring the small difference in location can be 100% sure. Um, so, yeah, um, Woburn, uh, if we go back to the video freeze frame from Aiden, you can see here that Woburn, over uh, a period extending back between the 21st and the 23rd of September, so this is a, a 72-hour period, Woburn and Bedfordshire recorded 147.4 millimetres of rain. The September monthly mean is 55.3 millimetres of rain, so nearly three months worth of rain falling within a three-day window. So the percentage of normal in three days is 267% of average. And then several other locations recording well over 100 to 120 millimetres of rain within a seven-day period. Uh, we did see tornadoes in some parts of the south as well, and even Aden, uh, very, very uh, 
beautifully describes uh, the reasons behind the development of that supercell that produced tornadoes, uh, produced the, the incredible lightning, over 6,000 lightning strikes uh, within a 24-hour period in parts of the British Isles, uh, particularly the south, and also was seen uh, the exceptional rainfall in response to that. But this colder getting driven south into unusually warm air, obviously warm air holds more moisture, Therefore, we see more exceptional rainfall in response to this collision between air masses. So uh, we continue to go forward here. You can see uh, some of the seams that were produced due to that flooding. And I'm sure you've already seen uh, the images on in the media here. But the, this is obviously the A421 dual carriageway Lincoln Bedford with the M1 motorway completely under water you would almost think some of these uh some of these images showing the overpass there crossing over the dual carriageway it almost looks more like a river as opposed to a, a major road so pretty remarkable stuff and i'm sure the impact of this flooding will be long lived uh, down in this region here a lot of damage has been caused to crops for example and uh, this is is a pretty big deal this was obviously the capture of the possible tornado in the Luton area back during the course of the weekend as well. So going forward, uh, what are we looking at here? Strong jet stream displaced to the south. Areas of low pressure will continue to ride in off the Atlantic into the British Isles. In the meantime, we've got the air getting forced south out of the Arctic region. That clash is going to continue to drive home the wet, windy conditions, but also uh, areas of cold air that is uh, coming south will get forced right the way down over the British Isles, especially as these features that run the jet stream exit to the east is going to open the door to that cold air coming down. But notice here that after seeing in excess of 100, 150 millimetres of rain over the past three or four days here, unfortunately, we do have more rain in the forecast and if we look at this total accumulated precipitation of the ECMWF we play through this loop you can see where the jet is orientated to the south there's that moisture getting driven across the Atlantic into the southern UK here and it looks as if between now and the end of this month we are going to see a further possible 100 plus millimeters of rain we are also going to see some heavy rainfall moving into the north of England southern areas of Scotland as well as these lows kind of pull the moisture and curl it around the circulations, it drives moisture further and further north. But if we specifically look at the, the UK in particular, you can see between now and the end of the month, we have a swath, an additional 150, even close to 200 millimetres of rain, by the way, falling across south and mid Wales through the Midlands here. So this is obviously going to be quite a big issue, less in the way of rainfall due to the, the storm track being to the south of, uh, of uh, Scotland, generally speaking. But this is quite problematic given the amount of water that we have in the ground at the moment, unfortunately. Looking back at the bigger picture here, you can see the waves of cold coming south here. It is kind of coming and going here. It's not just like one air mass of Arctic origin and then it kind of just sticks around. We've got a very active jet. You can see here the gradient between warm and cold uh, forced, like I said already, to the south. Lots of cold air due to the block across Greenland is getting driven southwards here with low to the east, high to the west. we we'll play through this loop and you can see here the cold air coming southwards. Area of low pressure moves in, bringing more wind and rain, more in the way of rain as opposed to wind. As that system then exits to the east, it opens the door to some fairly cold air. Then the next feature moves in, not one, but actually two areas of low pressure moves in off the Atlantic here. Again, it brings something slightly milder into the southern UK. The cold lingers on across the north. We get the same old story that end, then exits to the east. And then we've got the next wave of cold air coming south. This is off the ECMWF model. And it's a, a similar kind of scenario as we progress through the course of next week and through the first week of October here, it looks as if we've got this kind of same scenario unfolding. And you can see it quite clearly here 
in the GFS model here. This is the upcoming five day period. Big block north Atlantic, Greenland, up into the Arctic region. The trough descending from the Norwegian Sea down the western side of the British Isles here. Active jet here to the south means that we've got systems coming in across northern France and the southern UK through the next five to seven days. Even moving into the six to ten day, you can see that that block remains in place. And this is something that I'm going to highlight to you as well. The lingering effects of the, the weak vortex, the MJO being in phase seven and eight in a fairly amplified way. And the pattern may linger through at least the first half of October. Even as we skip out to the 11 to 15 day, you can see that the block remains in place. So therefore, it doesn't look as if we're going to see any significant change as we progress through the first half of, uh, of October. Even looking at the, the CFS V2 model, this is week one, powerful block and high, deep trough extending into the western side of Europe here with the storm track along that boundary between the Azores high and the trough to the north. Even in the week two, you can see the CFS V2 very much the same as the GFS Ensemble. The block remains in place. And then, of course, if we look at uh, Europe specifically and look at uh, the temperature anomaly chart here, there is no surprise that we are going to see cooler than average conditions. Week one is uh, looking like this here. And then week two, CFS V2 kind of washes out the cool uh, anomaly, if you notice here. But if we look at the, uh, the GFS Ensemble, you can see uh, upcoming five days firmly below average, uh, the six to ten still below average and the cold spreads further into Europe if you notice and then the 11 to 15 day you can see here that it lingers with the cold all the way out 5th of October through the 10th of October here so that negative any signal looks to linger on into the month of October what influence does that have later down the road remains to be seen but nonetheless uh, September is going to average out close to average in terms of temperature, but it's also going to potentially be slightly below average in terms of temperature as well. And looking at the first half of October uh, showing up fairly cold, it's, it certainly is turning out to be quite an interesting autumn thus far, given the fact that we've just came off the back of the coolest summer for the UK since 2015. So, uh, so yeah, very interesting times to come. Unfortunately, there is a lot more rain to come, especially in areas that have seen the wettest conditions over the last uh, five or so days or so. So stay tuned and keep it right here on my YouTube channel. Like and subscribe. Check out the Tropical Outlook that was released a couple of hours ago as well if you're interested. And we'll be looking at the Polar Vortex, Arctic Oscillation, etc., etc. in the next day or so as well. Enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. Bye for now.